Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. Recently I published a video about the latest and greatest Beagle Boards single board computer called BeagleBone AI64. A friend came back with the feedback saying it's very powerful and it's great but it's also quite large. So is there a smaller alternative? Yes there is and it's called Pocket Beagle. Several years ago Beagle Board Foundation released this a low-cost 1 GHz single board computer capable of running Linux in a very small form factor. And today we're gonna explore it for your convenience. The video is divided into chapters and if you like it, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pocket Beagle is open source hardware and you can make the printed circuit board on your own. And if you need someone to manufacture it for you, visit the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. For many years PCBWay has been providing PCB manufacturing, assembly, 3D printing and CNC services. Nowadays PCBWay is even providing contract manufacturing as a one-stop solution for your products. Visit PCBWay.com to learn more and if you're a new user you get a bonus. Let's start with the unboxing of Beagle Board's Pocket Beagle. It comes in a small and stylish plastic box which contains only two things, Pocket Beagle single board computer and a small leaflet, so it's gonna be a really quick unboxing. On the box we read, Pocket Beagle, low cost 1 GHz Linux computer, unleash your imagination, be inspired and learn from the best online community. Let's have a look at the technical specifications of Beagle Board's Pocket Beagle. Pocket Beagle offers Texas Instruments IM335X 1GHz ARM 32-bit Cortex-A8 CPU, 512MB DDR3 RAM, 3D Graphics Accelerator and Neon Floating Point Accelerator. There is a 72 expansion pin header with power and battery input outputs, high-speed USB, 8 analog inputs, 44 digital GPIOs and numerous digital interfaces for peripherals. Headers are not included so you need to buy them separately and solder them on Pocket Beagle if you're planning to use the single board computer on a breadboard or if you're planning to add an add-on board which in the universe of Beagle board is called a cape. Actually there is one advantage that pins are not soldered to Pocket Beagle out of the box. This way it is possible to design your own printed circuit board and put on top of it Pocket Beagle as a module for surface mount technology assembly. Pocket Beagle also provides a micro SD card slot, a power button and a micro USB connector. There is no eMMC or other internal memory so in the next chapters we'll be loading Linux as an operating system from the micro SD card. Almost everything on Pocket Beagle is in a single chip. This is the Octavo Systems OSM-D3358-SM. This is a system and a package with the size of 21 by 21 millimeters. This small package in a system includes the Texas Instruments 1 GHz ARM 32-bit Cortex-A8 CPU and the 512 MB DDR3 RAM. It also includes 4 kilobytes of EEPROM memory. The company Octavo Systems has managed to incorporate all these features in a single BGA package. Pocket Beagle mechanical dimensions are 56 mm by 35 mm. And if we have to compare it to another single board computer on the market, this is definitely going to be Raspberry Pi Zero. As you can see in the video, both boards are super small and convenient in terms of size. The advantage of Raspberry Pi Zero is that it comes with more connectors, for example the mini HDMI, the additional USB, as well as the camera interface. Also Raspberry Pi Zero W and Raspberry Pi Zero 2 feature Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. However, Pocket Beagle also has some advantages compared to Raspberry Pi. Unlike Raspberry Pi, Pocket Beagle offers 8 analog inputs and it has significantly more digital GPIOs because Pocket Beagle has 44 of them. Another nice feature of Pocket Beagle which is not present on a Raspberry Pi is the microbus socket connection. 
This allows you to easily attach the so-called Microbus click boards, which is a trademark of Microelectronica, and there are manufacturing significant number of these click boards. Beagle Board Foundation is providing Debian Linux images for all of its boards, and there is a Debian image for Pocket Beagle. It is a headless image, which means that it contains no graphical user interface. Let's have a look at it. I need to launch a web browser on my personal computer and visit beagleboard.org. After that, through navigation in their website, I have to find out beagleboard.org latest firmware images. For Pocket Beagle and Beagle Bone, they're offering a Debian image without graphical desktop environment. It is based on an older version of Debian, this is the Buster release, and it's suitable for Internet of Things. I'm going to download it. Of course, the download takes some time depending on the internet connection speed, but here in the video we can skip this annoying part. After successfully downloading the Debian image for Pocket Beagle on my computer, I'm going to plug a micro SD card at reader so that I can flash the image that I've just downloaded to the card. There are many ways how to flash the downloaded image to a micro SD card. I personally recommend you to use Balena Etcher because it is very user friendly and has a graphical user interface. This is exactly what I'm using right now. Again, it takes some time for Balena to copy the content of the image to the micro SD card, but thanks to the magic of video editing, we can skip this annoying part once again and move on. Now it's time for the wiring of Beagle Board's Pocket Beagle. All I need is the micro SD card that I've just prepared and a USB cable. This is a type A to micro USB cable. Using this cable, I'm going to connect Pocket Beagle to my personal computer. Over the USB, Pocket Beagle will receive enough power so that it can boot the Debian image. But the USB connector on Pocket Beagle is not used just to power on the board. It has two additional features which are very specific for Beagle Bone and it's something that you will rarely see on other single board computers. Actually, this is one of the advantages of BeagleBoard's approach to embedded devices. The first feature is that Pocket Beagle will be mounted and recognized as a USB storage device. And the second feature is that through the USB, you also have network interface so that you can SSH from your personal computer to Pocket Beagle. And I'm going to demonstrate you how to do this. As soon as Debian successfully loads on Pocket Beagle, this single board computer will be recognized as a mass storage device on my personal computer, so I can access the files that it offers. The file start.htm can be opened in a web browser, it's basically a web page with getting started notes, and there you can find all the details how to access the network of Pocket Beagle. So basically now we have my personal computer and Pocket Beagle in the same network and I can ping a Pocket Beagle from my personal computer. I can also use Secure Shell to access it. For the SSH connection, please use the default user, which is Debian with the default password temp PWD. From security point of view, of course, it's a good idea to change this default password. We have successfully logged in remotely via SSH to Pocket Beagle, so let's have a quick check of the system. We are running Debian GNU Linux distribution release 10 with codename Buster. The Linux kernel version is 4.19 and it has been compiled especially for Beagle Bone and ARM v7. I'm having a quick look at the uh, hardware specifications from the software side. The CPU info reports that this is an ARM v7 processor. What I really like in Pocket Beagle is that it is open source hardware. Beagle Board Foundation has released all schematics so that you can study, modify, make or even sell Pocket Beagle. The printed circuit board has been designed with KiCad, which is a free and open source tool that I really like and also use. Pocket Beagle Revision A2 has been certified by the Open Source Hardware Association, which proves that this is an entirely open source hardware project with free and open source software that runs on it. All design files and schematics for Pocket Beagle are available in a public Git repository. This means that anyone can download, study and modify them. 
As I mentioned earlier, there is a version of Pocket Beagle designed with KiCad, and I'm a user of KiCad, so I'll use this opportunity to download the files and load them in KiCad. So here is the magnificent Pocket Beagle loaded in KiCad. First we're gonna have a look at the schematics and after that at the printed circuit board design. And by the way, the best part about KiCad is that it runs on Linux. Here I'm using it on my laptop with Ubuntu. Pocket Beagle was announced on the market in September 2017. This is almost five years ago. And back then it was available for 25 US dollars. Nowadays, Pocket Beagle is available through several well-known distributors, including OKDo, OK Element 14, which is part of the Farnow network, DigiKey, and Mauser. Mauser is expecting Pocket Beagle units in stock at the end of the year, and the retail price for one unit is 45 US dollars. Farnow has Pocket Beagle in stock for pretty much the same price, and they are expecting a large quantity of new units in near future. This is the last chapter of the video, so let's wrap it up with conclusions about Pocket Beagle. Let's start with the advantages. Number one, in my opinion, is that Pocket Beagle is open source hardware designed with KiCad. This is really convenient if you want to modify it and integrate it into your projects. Pocket Beagle is good for um, hardware projects such as robots, drones, um, audio projects, you can even integrate it in uh, industrial embedded devices. Another advantage of Pocket Beagle is the small size. You can easily fit it on your own printed circuit board. Another advantage is the software support. Uh, Beagle Board Foundation is providing Debian images, which are really convenient to get started with. Last but not least, an advantage is the system in a package. Uh, which has the CPU, the GPU and the RAM memory in one big single chip. Pocket Beagle also has some disadvantages. In my opinion, the major disadvantage is the lack of connectivity options. There is no Wi-Fi, no Ethernet, no Bluetooth. Of course, they can be added, but you as an engineer should take care of this. And another disadvantage is that it's not very powerful, but considering the low cost and the availability of this board, I would say that it's a good value for money and it's a great open source project. Thank you for your attention. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if so, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned for new videos.